Hi. Well, I've made I've made a tray. I suppose there's about 20, 20 there, which I'll just pop into the drying cabinet to excuse my squeaky chair. And there we go. <laughs> and um, now we can get on with um, making these. Now I don't know if you can find anything like that when you go for a walk in the park or out in the country or an arboretum. Probably I think I may have picked this up down in the south of France and just thought it looked rather beautiful and stuck it in my pocket and there it was when I got back home. I don't know if you meant to bring things like that quite through. Anyhow I've made a little mould as I showed you how before and I've started to make some of these just little white ones. I'm going to make a whole series again then you can have choice of how you actually decorate them. These ones I've coated, can you see, I coated them with sepia ink and then I've put little bits of um, acrylic gold size on and then I've put various gold, silver and copper leaf on and they're just sort of in, this, in the process of building up a few layers. You just keep going until they look nice really. So I'll pop those in there and show you how to do it. Using um, this lovely air dried clay, Porzella. I'm sure there's lots of different um, makes. I've only found this one and I've stuck with it because it's so soft and lovely. So a little ball, roll it out into a sort of long thing and what you do is just press it in as I'm sure you all know and squidge it in and smooth out the edges a bit because it can always be gently filed off later. Make the back fairly And then take it out like that. I would um, make quite a few of those as I'm in the mood. Turn the radio on and off you go. So they can go into the drawing cabinet along with all the others and I'll do a few more later. Um, now I want to show you what I do here. The um, I use this stuff from Robeson. Robeson. Um, Robeson, yes, and Co. And you just look on the internet and anybody who does an acrylic girl size, it will do. And I've poured some into a plastic drinking cup, but then I've popped it into a, a jar. Just happens to be a rather lovely little jar, doesn't it? And an old brush because the stuff never dries, it always stays tacky. And then what I do is, you see it's got lots of tiny little indentations in the indentations. So what I'm going to try and do is drop a little bit of gold size into a few of these, not necessarily all of them, just a few, like that. And then when that comes out, and maybe just a bit along the edge like that, and when that is dry in about 10 minutes, then I'll be able to put, I think I'll probably put uh, gold on it, and then I'll put a little bit more size, add a little silver, and then, <coughs> I'll be putting on some sepia coloured ink. Any sepia will do. I just happen to have this to hand, the Cornelison one, which is really, oh, so nice. <laughs> but anyone will do. And then we'll take it a step further. What I intend to do with those little um, fur comb ones, I think I mentioned before, was to cover them with silver leaf. And what you do then is you take one, literally, and just cover it all over with this stuff. You know, it will only go into the places it will only go. That's the way it goes. And it dries off. You can take off the excess if you wish, like that. And then just leave it to go tacky. When it's gone tacky, you get um, silver leaf. It doesn't have to be sterling silver leaf, you know. It can be this wonderful stuff called schlag, which is an aluminium, and it's beaten, beaten and beaten really flat. And then it's dyed and so the silver is just the aluminium and it's dyed gold and it's cheap as chips actually compared to the real thing. The only reason I'm using the sterling silver is because that's what I've got in the studio. I normally have lots of the other stuff too but the advantage with using the sterling silver is you can do that whole patination process whereby you put it in a box with a hard boiled egg cut in half and you leave it somewhere warm Airing cupboard if you live on your own, not if you don't, because it's awfully smelly, very sulphurous. Um, I make a little box, as you know, this magic cabinet, which has just got an electric light in, 
and I leave it overnight. And if you would do that with silver and leave it for a few days, you can watch how it shifts and changes through all these different colours of ageing and patination. It's quite magical and alchemical. Anyhow, the first layer of silver might not go everywhere, it might be what you want, but what I'm going to do is just put some more on this and you won't be able to see it because the camera isn't delicate enough. But what happens is that it just falls into the places where the silver didn't go, which means that when it goes tacky, you can put a different colour um, metal leaf on it. And sometimes I use metal foils as well, which come in lots of different colours and they're very shiny. It's awfully nice to contrast the, the sort of patination you get with sterling silver leaf with a shine, high shine you get with foil, silver foil, and with the sort of midway thing that you get with the beaten aluminium. A journey of discovery. So I'll see you in a little bit and we'll take it a step further. Okay, bye. Have a cup of tea.